to another episode of the Mighty Misfit Menagerie or mm. cast. You know, we've had cast. like only good ones of those for months now, and I am so proud of us. Thank you guys. Uh, All right, I'll watch to- it, I guess. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be doing um, an two hours of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, followed on uh, Twitch by two hours of World of Darkness. So feel free to stick around and uh, and enjoy both of those streams. We also, yes. real quick announcement right at the beginning, um, we have all of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden and all of the Good Enough's D and D campaign up on Spotify and Apple Podcasts now. And by the time this goes up, we should have all of World of Darkness up as well. Um, so I know a couple of people asked for podcasts; those should all be available from now going forward, uh, published just the same time as the YouTube videos. So we hope you guys enjoy those. If you have any other uh, requests, please let us know. Uh, and with that, who wants to give Thank me a recap, <laughs> a recap of what happened last week? I can do it. Okay, so we've defeated the dragon. Its body parts are strewn all around us. Rap points. Like, bow, bow, bow. <laughs> There are, there's cheering from our adoring f- crowd. And uh, and so then we're like, what's going on? So Jesker goes up and scouts around the town and there's like oh little squads of Drurigar everywhere, but they're mostly being fought off by the locals, by the militia. Um, so we're like, okay, everybody seems to be doing okay, but where did those Drurigar come from? Like, it's like they appeared out of nowhere, what? So then Tempest is like, okay, I'm gonna go talk to the speaker because she needs to clean up this Chardolin and we need her help if she can spare anybody because we need to go to that fortress. We know where it is. We need to go. We need to destroy it. Uh, So speaker's like, I don't got anybody for you. (laughs) Do you see what's happening in my town? So we're like, okay, but pick up the Chardolin, keep it away from people. And she's like, all right, I'm on it because she trusts us now. We got her ear. Uh, Okay, so then we're like, we'll leave the next day. So everybody does some like last, you know, any last minute things. Z's like, I got to go talk to Valin. So he goes to the witch's tea and there she is. She's hanging out. I mean, it's really busy because there's all these refugees. Um, And people are probably in good, like really sad and really happy. I don't know. It probably is a mix of emotions. So Z's like, hey girl, you were great in that battle let us go to the fortress together and she's like i don't want to do that that sounds awful uh and really hard so you can do that and when you get back i have a job for you (laughs) which is getting a book sounds pretty simple i'm sure there's more to it i'm actually really excited for that i'm i was almost willing to skip the fortress (laughs) just to go help her with the book because i really like her (laughs) uh okay so so then we we sleep overnight, then we are like, okay, we're gonna go. But then of course the blizzard uh, descends upon us because this is 10 towns and we haven't had a blizzard in like four days. So who knows? <laughs> anyway, so we're, but we're like snow, schmo, we're going. So we head out, uh, we get a little lost. Tempest is like, okay, I'm not navigating anymore because she's angry. And so then, uh, oh my god names altus and altus takes over navigating (laughs) and we don't get lost so that's great uh we camp overnight we see these majestic mammoths crossing the tundra and and um tranquil's like i want to go make friends with those guys uh one of the the biggest one is like talk he talks to tranquil and is like i'm not in the helping you dude we're trying to get out of here um and and tranquil lies to him <laughs> telling him that we're going to hunt some uh some mammoth killers some poachers <laughs> which of course we would kill mammoth killers if we came across them so and we have no idea the Druagar policy on mammoths so it was technically a truth through ignorance <laughs> sure so inference yeah <laughs> <laughs> So then the big daddy mammoth is like, okay, well, I'll send my son, who's a smaller mammoth, but still, you know, really strong, of course. Son's kind of a dick, not super into helping us, which, I mean, that makes sense. Why would he want to help us? (laughs) He's like, let's go, let's go. 
So even though we were gonna camp, we don't camp, we hit the road some more. We get further in and then, well, eventually we get to the fortress. I, I'm not sure. I don't think we camped overnight, did we? Uh, you guys rested on the sled and you guys did camp for a while. Okay, cool. Um, so, anyway, so we do, we spend overnight, but we do okay. We don't see any Reggie nomads. Thank goodness. We can't be distracted right now. So we get to the fortress and we're doing a little debating. Everybody's trying to figure out how, what's the best way in. Quill's got some cool ideas. Axe speak blimp. You get it. You uh, get it. And Tempest is like, I just want to go in. Let's go in. So then they sneak. So then Quill and Z sneak up to the front. Immediately they're like, it's like really loud. You guys just come on. So then we all go up to the front. We're scratched there. Dr. Shivers, boop, boop, boop. he goes through the wall and he's like, he sees one watch Drew Rigar, who's like looking bored, doesn't know we're there, obviously. So then Z's like, hello, telepathic <laughs> antenna, I don't know. Uh, and he senses that same watch Drew Rigar, of course, she's very bored. There's two sleeping Drew Rigar somewhere near and a fourth being that thinks, what are they waiting for? What? <laughs> so we go in. We're like, forget this. We're going in. <laughs> Tempest runs in. Arrow tries to get her, doesn't. And here we are. <laughs> Excellent. And <laughs> with that, can I have everybody roll initiative? <laughs> oh, we're hitting As that the right off the bat. Duragar that out. fired through the arrow slit starts calling back in her deep uh, under dark under common trying to uh, to reach the rest of her comrades to alert them of intruders. What's everybody got for me? Uh oh. Got a 13. Nine. I also got a nine. 15. Okay 16. who has the better um who has the better between the two of you, Altus and Tempest? I just have a plus one. So okay. I have a plus three. Okay, so Altus will be first, Tempest will be second. And then uh, I missed um, Z's. 15. 15? Okay. Excellent. So I have our lovely friends uh, at a... Other number, which means that Tranquil will be first. So as you know, um, both the portcullis and the doors have opened up. So this uh, area is open. Each of these squares that you see is uh, 10 foot by 10 foot. Um, so keep that in mind while crossing it. The map is adjusted accordingly if you want to check distances or anything. Um, but we'll start from there. Uh, Coulter, do you have my squirrel? Uh, let me double check one second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm typing the, uh, the initiative still. No, you're fine. But do you have my squirrel? <laughs> Where's our little buddy? Episode um, 10. Do you have my squirrel? <laughs> it is on top of, uh, it was on top of Altus. Oh, there or he Z. is. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have him shoot in and just just ruin that Druergar Archer's day. Um, right. I have very little options <laughs> as far as attacking uh, also, things through this arrow area over here. Um, those are like almost five feet across, so you can easily walk through each of those. Oh, okay. I thought that was closed for some reason. Mm -hmm. I know it looks a little bit strange, but because of the scaling, you can make it through there. It's like narrow, uh, I but just, it's not impossible. In my brain, last time we were in like a kill box, like there was a closed door in front of us, but like we could enter this area. I don't know why. Um, and also kill box. Uh, is 16? Does 16 hit? 16 will just hit. Okay. So that's 3d6. Uh, 
apologize to everyone. I am just waking up. So if I seem dead or drunk, I am both. Um, <laughs> uh, that's 15 damage. Necrotic. Iggy X. Okay. And then she needs to make a con save. And if she fails it, she loses that from her max HP. But it's only like a DC 10. So I'm pretty sure she'll pass. And she does. All right. And that will bring us down to Z. Where was that taking place? That was right here. It's hard to see because it's partially blacked out, but that little indentation of the wall is an arrow slit. Got it. Um, and you guys can probably see this now. I can reveal that area since you can see it through those. Um. So if I go here, can I see through that arrow slit? Uh, barely. It's. I mean, it is just like it's just wide enough for them to put the bow through. Can I see anyone in there? Um, there is the person that shot the arrow through there. Okay, do you toll the dead. Okay. Ooh. And is there supposed to be two Phoenix? That's a wisdom yes. save, right? Yeah. yeah, he has his face summoned from last time. So that's an 11 on the wisdom save. Yes, and it's mirthful. Oh, uh, <laughs> but there's mirthful. damage already, right? Yes. Um, so that's 11. Uh, you hear this grunt from the other room and then a thud. Yeah. And that will bring us down to Finnick. Oh, dang. <laughs> you hear from the other room now rustling as the call is heated. Uh, which other room did we hear that from? Um, you hear it from this direction. Okay. I will situate myself inside next to Altus. Um, and... Actually, I'll come up to the arrow slit too. Can I see inside? I guess I'll go like right up. Um, yeah, if you're walking right up to it, you can see just um, straight forward. So that's going to reveal like that. You can okay, see I'll, a door uh, and then a, a kind of darkened room. I'll hold a fire bolt until I can, um, until I, if I see anybody walk past. Okay. And then right after me, my face spirit will go. So she will walk 30 feet here. Oh, a lady. Describe and, what your face spirit looks like for us. Uh, so she looks like uh, a female, very broad, uh, definitely stronger than me. And okay. she is kitted out in full tiger tribe garb. So ah. like tiger pelt, uh, with all the fixings around the like her hand and everything. Um, and she is going to use a bonus action to teleport into this room. All right. And then when she's in the room, if she sees anybody, I need them to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. And uh, can you see through her eyes or no? Um, I don't think so. Okay, cool. So if she sees anybody, they need to make a wisdom save? Yep. Okay. And do you know, uh, does that affect multiple targets or just the first? That she just, sees? just one. First one she sees. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and that is going to bring us down to their turn. Um, the sounds from the other side are intensifying. You can start to hear the clanking of armor uh, as if there's like some sort of preparation um, being taken. Hold um, one moment. And I like the right. companion arms race that Finnick and Tranquil have going on. Like he has a familiar, I get a better one. <laughs> he gets like a fey buddy. Now I have to figure <laughs> out how to do that. And that'll bring like us it. to Altus. Um, Altus is going to move in right about here. And what do, what do I see being right in here? 
um, exactly what's revealed right now. You do not see within the room because Finnick is, Finnick is blocking the arrow slit. Okay. Um, so yeah, just this kind of empty stone room with a flat floor and very like undecorated walls. There okay. is um, soft uh, flame light coming from a brazier in the corner. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to attack first i'm gonna just ready my guiding bolt start getting the flame conjure or the the light conjuring around in my hands okay um okay so that's gonna bring us down to tempest then okay i'm gonna run around this corner five Excellent. ten fifteen what's a z <laughs> uh you see doors to uh the area within there. Um, so let me see here. We got, now that you're here, you can see all of this. Behind you, there is a hallway that seems to split off in three directions. And in front of you, there are two large unadorned, unadorned stone doors. Okay, I try to open the doors. Okay, yeah, they open, they're not locked or anything. Okay. So, so within 20, there. 25. Thirty, thirty-five, forty. 30, 35, 40. Um, let me see here. Inside oh, this it looks room, like a low ends. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a room um, every, and it's, sorry, it's, I'm trying to reveal each of these areas just so you can see enough of what's there. Um, that should, yeah. Um, a low stone table flanked by stone benches dominates this room, which is heated and illuminated by braziers glowing hot coals. Through the hazy smoke, you see a featureless stone doors lining the walls. So single versions of what you just walked through. And from each of those is where you hear the sounds. Oh, okay. Um, I am going to, let's see. Do I want to open the door? Yeah, I'm fucking going for it. The first door I see, I'm thinking this door probably. Okay. And it opens into, is that the end of your movement? Um, if I do a double movement, it's not. Okay. Um, uh, you see within that room a Duragar just finishing putting on their armor and brandishing a weapon. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Oh, okay, so I do have to take a double movement, but I'll rage, and he takes two damage. Okay. <clears throat> Hi. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you get a grunt in return as we come back to Tranquil. Well, Tranquil can't run as fast as his sister. And where did Shivers go again? <laughs> into, the, into the room we're in. It's not under me. Uh, he <laughs> might have been on the Druagar who got deleted. But I deleted. <laughs> Can I undelete it? I don't think so. I'll have to bring it back. Give me two seconds. I'll bring it over from another screen. Tommy, one, yeah, you're five, five, two. Ten, 15, 20. 25, 30. I'm on my way, sister mine. <laughs> Five, 10. 15, I, pr I don't make any promises 20, about saving any for you. <laughs> 25. That's actually close enough for me to attack that Drugar. Is that door open? <laughs> uh, she just opened oh, it, yeah. I, opened I had it. to make a double move to get here anyway. So Shivers has a, I think, 50 foot movement speed. Yeah. That's right here. Okay, so snap to center, five to 30 feet. I will send Shivers over to the Druagar to do the help action for uh, Tempest's next turn as he just squirrels all over that guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that's an interesting phrasing. Um, all right, that's gonna bring us down uh, yeah. from <laughs> Tranquil to Z. <laughs> Well, everyone's going in there, so let's do it. So, five, ten, fifteen. I found your squirrel on another page, so I'll bring it over. <laughs> We're going to go there. And if that dude is visible, I guess, let's do a... Let's do 
Spiritual touch, why not? Okay. That is a... What is... The, oh, yeah, that's that's a pretty long distance. Never mind. 18, it's 120 feet. Yeah. 18, uh, 18 will hit. Okay. Uh, five necrotic. In front of you, uh, Tempest, it's hit by the bolt and you see its skin almost begin to dehydrate as its cheeks start to sink in from that damage before returning back to its normal form. That's your own! <laughs> and that'll bring us trying to help, trying to help. All right, um, Finnick is going to... <laughs> He's probably blocking the door right now for like a melee attack. Um, yeah, for melee attack, no. I let the ranged go, but... Okay. She will come up here and then bonus action teleport right here and um what is this a doorway is it an open door yes it's a closed doorway okay um i will have her open the door okay uh inside same deal another duragar finishing donning its armor okay um and then she's gonna attack and he needs to make a save, right? No, because it's right after she teleports. So if she oh, okay. he was invisible when that. she teleported, I wouldn't got work. it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, so she'll make a sword attack, short sword attack. Does a dirty twenty hit? Uh, barely, yeah. <laughs> Fifteen points of damage, slashing damage. Okay, yeah, that'll uh, that'll hit. All right, all right, yeah. As it goes immediately, uh, taking this down to bloodied. And then I did that backwards. So it's actually Finnick's turn first. So Finnick will move five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty into the room and fire bolt this dude. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 22 to hit. That hits. Uh, that is a nine points of damage. All right, this guy's looking very unhappy with his life right now. And that is going to bring us to their turn as all of them come out of these barracks doors now fully adorned in their armor. Um, the two that you were next to uh, making their first attacks as the one reaches out to Tempest. That is going to be his war pick and a 23 to hit. Mm, just barely. <laughs> and that'll be eight piercing damage as it swings back. The other attacks the Fey, and that'll be an 18 to hit. Yep, that hits. Okay, for... Uh, nine piercing damage. And the other ones, seeing all of you, uh, move to a place where they can grow and use their enlarge feature. Stick. <laughs> but now they're oh, all bottlenecks of foot bit <laughs> idiots. This is going to be fun. We counted. The, like the Drew, that's the that's the correct amount of Drugar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and that will bring dragon. us. That'll bring us down. <laughs> to this, uh, hell. Get your skinny ass in here. Please tell me that's what Tranquil is, or te- what Tempest says. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, I hear any, if I hear any, like Quafflin, uh, I would. <laughs> no, that's that's Jake, not Altus. <laughs> what? Oh, good lord. All right, bring it. I smell, in here. I smell spell slots suspended. Okay, Ooh. go ahead. Uh, my trick? My day, yeah. Am I... Can I get through this? No. Mm-mm. It was big Damn. enough to fire through. It's not big enough to, like, move through. Kaim could do it. Kaim could do <laughs> it. Uh, let's see. I want to get all the way in there, 
but I don't think I can. I can get now. No. Let's see. I have 30 movement speed. Okay. I could get to there. I forgot about my rifle. Oh. No. Altus, I will say you do have to go around corners, so it's not a straight movement. Just remember that. Oh, darn. Okay. Well, let's see. What would impress Tempest the most? You could get in front of Z, basically. Yeah. I, would I like can tell you, you killing you her with through someone. a guard. <laughs> Five, do not do that. <laughs> it's the only thing do not do. I'd like to get in front of Z. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to get within melee range, but that's not melee range. It Let's see. Of one of them. Oh, wait. No. Oh, no, I am a oh, wrong person. You have like a cantrip you can throw? I do. It's just not as cool as what I wanted to do. Or the pistol, <laughs> okay. the alien thing. True. You got you that little pistol, one. right? I do. Keep track of your charges. Uh, I had guiding bolt exactly. readied. I'm just going to fire that off on this one. Cool, cool, cool. And that wouldn't have been the readied action. It just would have been actually this turn, but that also will work perfectly fine. Let me know yeah. what it is to hit. Make a ranged spell attack. So that's going to be okay. That was a nat 20. Uh, yeah, give me that damage. So max damage and then you roll. So 24 plus three, 26, or no, I'm sorry. That's 30, 36, uh, 41 damage. The guiding bolt hits it square in the chest and you see its form start to vibrate as it shrinks, shrinks to the ground, hitting the wall and slumping over in the corner. And that will bring us to Tempest. <laughs> I'm distracted. Um, okay, so I am going to hit the one in front of me with my great axe. Do you have, you advantage. have advantage on that? Um, wow, two fours. Oh, oh no. my God. Uh, so that's going to be frick. <laughs> Just too Ten. distracted by that Ten. one shot. Apparently. Yeah, it does not hit. Ten. All right, I'm attack again. I guess I'm attack. And that one was much better. That would be 24. That hits. Um, and then that's going to be 8 plus 5, 12. No, 13. Oh, plus, oh, yeah, plus my, um, my rage damage. So 15. All right, he is looking really bloodied now, just Does gashes all over his armor. I'm sorry, Quill, you get that damage too. All right, and that brings us to Quill, speaking of which, as he takes that heat damage from his sister. If only I were too was a tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> have resistance. Uh, okay, so are you still super, like, attached to that particular Druagar, or can we, like, remove a piece from the board? <laughs> I mean, if you would rather attack the small one that's in front of me, I guess, but... <laughs> well, I can attack two of them. That's why I'm saying, like, well, I can potentially two. remove one. There's and two then... in front of you. Oh, I can <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah, all right, do it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have... Go steal Quill up in here. I think Quill would do that, actually. So, you know. Mm. I just funny. would much rather my sister be out here with the big ones than tangling with the only small one. <laughs> well, I want to keep it in there so it doesn't get bigger, right? I think that's why it hasn't gotten bigger, because it's in this room. All right, so that will be uh, a dirty 20 uh, for... Hits. Uh, shivers to attack that one. Okay. Uh, for... Ooh, that's a low roll. Um, six. <laughs> and it was not looking good. So that one is now off the board as it slumps what? over in front of you. The squirrel floating behind it from having uh, destroyed it. <laughs> a little bit of a horror movie moment there. And uh, what's your second? 
Uh, and then I will attack this one uh, with a green flame blade. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then, oh man, it's a 19, but I didn't have any of my stuff up. Uh, it does hit. Okay, uh, so that one will take uh, 1d4 for the whip, and then it's um, 1d8 for the green frame blade, and 1d6 from sneak attack. Uh, For 11 initial damage, and then the one next to it takes an additional d8, uh, 4 plus my... Charisma modifier three seven, so this okay. one takes the first damage, and then that one takes seven. Okay, excellent. They both look angry with you at that moment, <laughs> and that brings us down to Z. All right, Z is going to look at this one, which one here, this one, and like give it a shitty grin and like snap at it. And can I get uh, conceives for? these three for these all three of those in the row there yep okay and okay that's an eight 13 and 15 so going from top uh, bottom to top eight 13 15 okay so you guys do remember from previous battles that they have advantage on their spell saves 13 and 15. Okay, so the 15 makes it. Okay, the other two do not. So the bottom two take the da- take whatever the full is, and then the top one, is it half damage or is it not hit? Uh, so the two bottom one take 23 damage. Jeebs, okay. And the top one will take half that, so 11. Okay, so you said 23? Yep. Um, those ones are already looking very, very rough. Uh, suck it. All right. Excellent. Okay. And that'll bring us, what did you just cast? Oh, I cast Shatter, but I upgraded it. So that was actually a third level. Fantastic. As the whole wall around you shakes. Luckily, you appear to be in the center of a barracks because that would have definitely been a dead giveaway. Yeah. Uh, And that will bring us to Finnick. Hi. Um, How tall are the ceilings? Um, the ceilings are uh, fairly tall. I believe they're um, 10 feet tall within the rooms and then uh, 15 in the hallways. Okay. I'd like to cast Fireball in such a way that I only get these three. Sorry, I flipped that around. 10 feet in the hallways, 15 fleet feet and vaulted uh, in the rooms. So Okay. So I can probably do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I will cast Fireball. Um, and this is the one that only took the half damage, right? Yeah. So he rolls a seven on his deck save. Great. And where are you placing that fireball? Um, above the middle one's head in such a way that it doesn't get anyone else. Yeah, you can do that with the size of the yeah. ceilings here. So deck saves from all three. And then Tranquil just leans back to avoid the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> also, Rio just called them dwarves in the chat. And I think that both dwarves and Durgar would take issue with that to say. Agreed. <laughs> I think uh, everyone got a little offended. I mean, <laughs> they're essentially just a sub race of dwarves, like the drow, but whatever. Okay, so the first one got so a you nat go one. around calling uh, most elves drow. <laughs> the first one got a nat one, and the second one got a nineteen. Okay, nineteen makes it. Nat one. Yeah, double ones on advantage. That was that's Ooh. great. <laughs> Two. I was so excited for their turn, and then you guys are just like, no. <laughs> we did come for Druagar genocide, so they we should have vengeance been on our breath right now. 33 points of damage. <laughs> Um, and then so have for the other two? Yep. Um, for the one. Because yeah. one got a nat one and then the other one rolled a seven. 
because I made him roll a seven. Yeah, as the fireball goes off, you see the fear in their eyes right before all of them were incinerated. All that's left on the ground aside from the ashes are and their Finnick, armors. Finnick will look up to the giant one right next to him and say, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> Z is laughing hysterically. He's so happy right now. Um, and then my face beard will go uh, right after me and she'll attack this uh, guy again. All right. That is a uh, 19 to hit. He is dead. Awesome. Yeah, so if oh. you want to roll your damage, you're more than welcome to. No, no, it's cool. Point yeah, left. I'm down. <laughs> All right. And that's going to bring oh. us to your big old friends. Mr. Um, DM. Yes, sir. I didn't roll Tides of Chaos. Do you want me to do that? Yes, I do. Thank you. You rock. Shimmered. He might turn into a rock. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, very, or not Tides of Chaos, sorry, Wild Magic. Wild Magic. I was like, what is Tides oh, of Chaos? That's four. That's a different effect. <laughs> All right. So the first one attacks your Fae for uh, a 10 to hit. That uh, does not. Second one attacks uh, Tranquil for 16 to hit. That will not hit. And the last one attacks Z for 20, dirty 20. Yeah, yeah, that hits. All right, so that does eight piercing damage uh, as it brings its uh, war pick down upon you. And you realize that you got out very lucky from what it could have done. And that will bring us down to... Stick my tongue out at it. Altus's turn. Um, has this one taken any damage? Yes. They have uh, all but the one in the hallway have taken damage at this point. Okay. Uh, hmm. Z, I have the utmost faith in you. I'm going to move to this one. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, reach out with my hand as it starts to turn black, and I'm going to try to grab it uh, uh, using Inflict Wounds. All right. Uh, so that's a 25. That'll hit. The and then I'm going to use a time? use it. Uh, no, we'll use it at the original level. So... Only seven necrotic damage. Okay, that's still not bad. He's definitely bloodied at this point. Um, all of them looking uh, rough, except for the one that has not been touched. And that'll bring us from Altus to Tempest. All right, I'm gonna step on over. I'm gonna attack the one in the corner once. That's gonna be uh, 17 plus six, 23. That hits. Four. 12, yes, plus five, um, 17 damage. And it's in your aura, uh, so is that another two? It's actually three. I forgot that oh. I leveled that up, but um, yes, yeah, so it is. And then as a bonus action, sure. Okay. Everybody take that. Yeah, who, and then who, I'll who take all is my, in your aura right now? So Quill the and the Face Spirit and Alt. Maybe Altus, Altus and but Finnick. not. But I don't think Finnick is. Mm -mm. Oh, if it's ten feet, no. the aura. ten feet. So yeah, I got I got Altus Quill and the Face Spirit plus this guy, and then I'm gonna attack that guy too. Um, that's gonna be twelve plus six. That's eighteen hits. And he's gonna tarik five plus five ten damage. Um, they are both dead immediately. Dropped on <gasps> the ground. <gasps> the hands of your tough barbarian, our damage dealing tank of a machine. And that'll bring us down from Tempest back to the top of the round with Tranquil. Alrighty then. Uh, my last, my turn is changed. <laughs> uh, I'm going to run over here, hex this big boy, and then uh, attack him with. I don't know, booming blade. That makes sense, right? Uh, six, 10, 13 plus three. So 16. 
that will just hit. And he is now booming. All right. And then and there's I no media damage from that one. Uh, I that I included it. Oh no! What was your roll to hit? I'm sorry. I just got a six. I only got one roll. I only heard one roll. Sorry. You know, I don't think I rolled an attack roll. I just got super confident there. <laughs> oh, um, I, I heard you yeah. roll and thought it was your attack roll. Come on, Colter. <laughs> it's so it's so early in the morning, guys. I'm sorry. Um, uh, that is a seventeen. I can't remember yeah. these guys. Okay. So 16, okay. so 17 to hit, 16 damage, and, and then he's booming. booming. Okay. And then I'm then on uh squirrel's turn, shiver's turn, he's going to do the help action to the next person who attacks. Excellent. And that will bring us from tranquil down to Z. Okay. Um Z uh while well, he's confident himself, he also wants to GTFO. So can he's wearing armor, correct? Uh, they are wearing, let me double check on what kind of armor they're wearing. Um, Regardless, you have advantage because of the squirrel. It's wearing scale mail. Fantastic. Squirrel. It's metal. Yay. Squirrel. Oh, thank God for advantage. Is this our first use of heat metal in the game? Ooh. Oh, hell no. Um, that is a uh, 21 to hit. Hits? And what are you doing? Um, I am casting someone to reach out, touch his armor and laugh at him. And he gets seven lightning damage. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then I'm going to move back here, and he cannot take reaction until the start of my it's till the start of his turn. Okay, excellent. And that will bring us from our dear Z down to Finnick. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm moving here. Finnick, let him take one step towards me, please. <laughs> I will move this way <laughs> out of his way um, and I'll shoot a fire bolt at him. Okay. That's a 10, which probably doesn't hit, huh? Does not hit, no. Okay. And then Face Spirit's going to walk up to here and then bonus action, bamf behind. I think she can do that. 30 feet, yeah, 20 feet. Um, and take a swipe behind him. Okay. 23 to hit. That'll hit, yeah. Uh, and she does something. <laughs> I would hope so, because she hit. <laughs> 13 points of damage. You hear the yeah. echo of the um, booming blade just kind of fizzling away as it slumps to the ground, the claw of the fae coming out of its back. And the hull hazy with the smoke from the braziers and something more foul goes quiet around you. I walk up to Finnick and give him a high, huge high five. I high watched. five back. It was badass. <laughs> I walk by Quill and I'm just like, that was two. <laughs> <laughs> I drop my rage. Yeah, All right. So now that we are out of combat and the room is clear, what is next? Search in the bodies. Search the bodies. I, I want like to search the very bottom one. Okay. Um, it becomes clear pretty quickly um, that these are all soldiers. Um, so that there isn't any... Um, go ahead and roll. Anyone or everyone or... Whoever's doing the searching. Uh, investigation or what would you like us to roll? Investigation? Yeah, investigation. 19. Okay. 15. Okay. So... Okay, so the two of you that are checking, um, these are soldiers and they're in uh, what appears to be a barracks room. Um, so none of them really have like personal belongings or anything on them. They are all carrying uh, a war pick and a uh, four javelin, um, as well as the, the Durgar size scale mail and a shield. So are we, do we want to be taking that and put it in the bag or? Might as well. I mean, if we have room for it, then we could potentially sell it or give it to townspeople. 
Should it I might be a dragon. It might be prudent to just come back with like a merchant army and just collect everything because who knows how many of these there are. I don't yeah. Come back. Maybe we. Uh, maybe we just come back and grab supplies after because we might just be sitting ducks right now. I'm gonna uh, kind of wander would, up here. I would agree with that. I don't think that we should come back a different day, though. I think we should take what we're gonna take now because I don't want to come back here. So Tempest wandering up there, you can see where the hallway splits off here. Um, it is pretty hazy, so you don't have a lot of um, line of sight, and it is darker. You notice when you get into the hallways. You noticed in the previous rooms that were like inhabited in that old entry hall, as well as in the barracks, they had those braziers burning. Um, but you can pretty easily surmise that Durgar don't need light to see. Um, so any light that you find is really just for warmth and it is warmer inside than it is outside. Hey Coulter, can I check this last door that nothing came out of? Sure, uh, it is, which yeah, um, it's another empty barracks room. Just making sure. Um, the archer would also have had a room. Um, I'd like to go here with Tempest and do detect dots. Hey Z, did you tell us about what you heard? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Tranquil will go, is anyone else concerned about the one who was waiting for us? Because these folks were not prepared. We were definitely not waiting for us. Mm -hmm. um, where where was the archer supposed to be? In here. Okay. And I all heard of that when I was here, right? So it's got to be down somewhere here. And how, what is the range of that again? See? Um, 30 feet. Okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing from here. Um, I think whatever I was hearing came from somewhere this direction down here, because if we were over here when I heard it, should we? I'm also just now thing? noticing there seems to be an arrow slit here too. Right. I just saw that. That could be. Okay. Most Can I follow it? Yeah. And I'll send my spirit this way just to check inside and then bam through. Okay. Um, so entering yibbity dibbity. Uh, as you come into this room, um, it, it's heated and eliminated by braziers of glowing hot coals like the last one. Visible on the west wall are that arrow slit that you saw that would have led out there, as well as an iron lever that is depressed and a heavy iron winch. Um, which is also locked. A floor to ceiling iron cage in the middle of the room contains an elevator shaft with chains running up and down away from it. The chains are in a constant motion and you hear loud mechanical noises higher up the shaft and further down as well. A double door is embedded in the middle of the east wall. Uh, air enters the room through a row of four arrow slits in the south wall. You see just the base of the elevator as it raises empty onto whatever is above. If I do detect that's here, do I sense anyone? Um, let me double check the distances here. Where are you standing? You're sitting there. No. So we've, we've got to assume that someone went down then, right? If we heard someone or, around this area and up. the elevator's just coming up empty, maybe they heard the commotion and then went down. Well, but also the gate controls are in here, so whoever was in here let us in. I think we've been fighting long enough that they could have gone either direction. Or they're still on this floor somewhere. There's still other places to explore. Can I do a perception of... I guess, investigation of the room itself. Uh, I'll look for like any hidden doors or anything like that. Okay. In this room here? Um, yeah, in the elevator room. Um, there are, go ahead and give me a, a, a roll, sorry. 
rolled a four and I'm using my luck. So that is a, is this an investigation or perception you want me to do? Um, this will be an uh, investigation. A uh, dirty 20. Um, no. In this room, it appears that all of the walls are just flat, um, aside okay. from the two doors that are uh, marked in the wall that are clearly supposed to be there. And Master, given the state of our enemy, it might be prudent for you to activate Detect Magic. Oh, that thing that you used to have and no longer because you're not trying to be a wizard anymore? Sure, I'll activate it. I don't have a lot of control over what happens, Master. It just kind of comes and goes in waves. <laughs> I'll uh, activate Detect Magic. I'll do it as a spell because we probably don't have a lot of time. Um, does it look like there's a way that I could jam the lever and the winch so that we don't get trapped in here? Uh, the winch is... We need to leave. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Um, roll an investigation for that as well. Um, 618. I think somebody just accidentally got deleted. No, I, I did it because it's... Uh, oh! Text magic is yeah. concentration, so it killed my fate. Hey, Coulter, uh, if it helps at all, I do have thieves tools. I mean, nobody's done. Oh, yeah. So um, with your, you said a 15 or a 16? 18. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty easy to figure out that um, the, with the position that the lever is in right now, it's down. Um, you could probably just break it off with a good enough strength check. Um, the winch is going to be a little bit harder. Um, you could uh, wedge something I... in there, though, to keep it stuck. I was going to say, I've got some ball bearings. Could I wedge some ball bearings in various nooks and crannies? With the thieves tools, you could probably get them shoved in there. You need something to be able to like pound it into the hole. So thieves tools in, in, uh, include little uh, metal Shoes. wedges specifically to do what we're talking about. So I can do that without having to waste your ball bearing. Cool. Hey, uh, Tempest, do you want to come break something for me? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to go through the store, but okay. Well, yeah, I, I do too, but I also want to make sure we don't get trapped in here and because we don't know what other exits or entrances there are. And that is over on, oh, over on this wall. So I'm getting super confused. I was like, well, we can just teleport circle out if we need to. And I was like, wait, wrong party. Wrong campaign. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I was looking through my cleric spells and I was like, oh, I got a lot of spells. And I was like, wait, this is the wrong character sheet. <laughs> I don't know how to do that yet. Are you wanting so, me next to the elevator or you said against that wall is where the controls are? You just got to break it off. It's over here. Yeah, against that wall. It's just like a shaft around the guy. You just got to bend it or kick it or break it or something. Okay. Do you have yeah, so give me a that? strength check. Yeah. 19. Yeah, that is enough. Um, it snaps right off the actual lever device itself coming out of its socket. Yeah. Uh, does that mean that we can't go down either? That's no, the, this... Sorry. This wasn't connected to the elevator. You, see, you hear no changes okay. from the elevator as it continues to move. This is for the portcullis and the doors. Mm, got it. I just want to make sure we don't get trapped, don't get in, trapped in here. Yeah. That makes sense. That's a good call. Okay, um, I'm going to open this door now. Okay. Fireball radio, something pops out of here. Um, a clarification, Coulter. So this elevator yeah. goes up, right? Not down. It goes both up and down. And as you say that, um, it in constant motion lowers back to your level pauses and then goes down so it's a constant elevator okay okay so tempest as you open that door um a stone yeah. desk and a chair stand empty on the east side of the room the braziers that normally heat and light the room have been extinguished and arrows in the south wall lets frigid mountain air in and i still have to deck magic up so if anything pops out as we walk in. Mm -mm. Nothing. There are some scattered um, papers on the desk. Um, it looks as if the room was left in a hurry. 
Can I look at the papers? Sure. They are in under common. Do we have a few minutes, you think? Mm. Perhaps we just bring them with us. And then if we find, I, I'm just worried that there's a force Some gathering. Coming. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good call. That's a good call. I'll shove them in my bag. Okay. Excellent. What do you guys do next? All so, invest. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, so common knowledge would say, f figure out everything on this floor before continuing. But if I was the leader of the group, I would want to be as high as possible or as low as possible. I've never had to think like a dwarf. I mean, I would think as low as possible, right? They enjoy in the ground. Um, I, so the few times that we've encountered these uh, Durgar, they were hiding, skulking. Should we check if there's any secret passages or anything in these rooms? Do that end. I was going to say, I probably would keep doing detect dots as we're walking wherever we're walking. Sure. So I'll do an investigation for this room as well to see if I can find any. Uh, I believe you did it when you walked into this room. Uh, it was when I walked into the elevator room, not to this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead and give me that roll then. Uh, that is a 15. Um, nothing. Mm -mm. No, it's it's just kind of a plain office. Everything just lacks any sort of decor or adornment. Like the walls are just flat stone. And that's been every room that you've been in so far. So what you're saying is there's no antique furniture for us to uh, swindle? So far. Uh, so far there's only stone furniture, so... Uh -oh. So cold and unrefined. Tempest, where does your violent nose tell you to go? Uh, I'm down to keep doing this level and come back to the elevator. I agree. Um, that would be my thought, but I don't care. <laughs> Can you... I just want to kill something. <laughs> Let's uh, finish this, this level. Can yeah. you all indulge me uh, and perhaps escort me to the first room? Um, I'd like to see if there's anything with my detect magic or see if there's any kind of hidden things there. Do you mean this room? Yeah. Right, take a walk okay. about it. There's a lot of dread Druagar in there. Uh, anything pinging with my detect magic? No, not with your detect magic. Um, okay. Mm -mm. And then I'll do another investigation just to see if there's and anything. Do a perception with disadvantage. The room is very smoky and hazy. Disadvantage perception, uh, 12. No, the walls are just, these like seem to be, it's almost as if it was carved out of a single piece, all of this. So is it strange that it's hazy? No, it's, it's coming from like the braziers and that it's okay. like there's some extra form of haze happening that's beyond just these like smoke from the embers. Um, but it's not clear where it's from. But every room you've been in has this. Um, the elevator room was a little bit less just because of the arrow slits, but all of these rooms have been pretty hazy so far. Well, thank you, uh, I guess, uh, just being paranoid. Um, I'm ready to go forward. All right, sister mine, two big doors, two big pushes. Evo. <laughs> Okay. Uh, as you go through those double doors, uh, this rectangular room has two sets of double doors, one to the north and the other to the south, which you came through. A brazier of glowing hot coals stands in each corner. In the middle of the room is a low stone table on top of which is drawn an illustration that looks something like a map. Is, is it dungeon? recognizable? <laughs> um, if you inspect it, uh, it looks like a depiction of 10 towns and the things that are around it. Mounted on top of it uh, is a thin iron stand that seems like it's going through the table itself. And on top of that stand is a six inch tall dragon figurine carved out of Chardolin. Looks like they were playing some kind of children's game. <laughs> I smashed the dragon. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, we probably could have sold that. <laughs> Any marks? What? Was no, no. what? <laughs> Any marks on the map that are discernible? Uh, it's clear just from you guys knowing the other maps that there are all of the spots of Ten Towns and like um, Kelvin's Cairn and things like that are all demarked as well as the lakes and the rivers and the basic roads. Um, and there is a lever on the west side of the table. Oh. I will check that for traps. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> uh, not great. Um, I wish I had a better intelligence score. Six. <laughs> as far as you can tell, no traps. Yeah. Looks yeah. No traps on that. None at all. <laughs> Why don't you pull it? I God, I want to pull the lever. Altus, pull uh, the lever, crunk. Grab, grab that leather lever while me and my sister listen at this next door. <laughs> Uh, I have my hand on the lever at all. Okay. And I look at them and I turn to try to find where Finnick and Z are. <laughs> oh, um, I'm going to go in the room and I'm also going to guidance you just in case. Okay. You guys have no confidence in me whatsoever. I checked it for traps. It's safe. <laughs> I have no confidence uh-huh. in the Druragar to not try to kill us every chance they get. And then I. And I push it. You hear this cranking of gears and the stand that was at one point holding the dragon figurine uh, that Tempest shattered begins to move along its row within the map, those grooves that you saw carved out as it makes a path through 10 towns in a broad circle. If you follow it, it ends at Bryn Shander. Mm. What an... <laughs> utter waste of resources to make a table just to do something you could just like draw on a map (laughs) i agree push open door (laughs) (laughs) right it was very ingenious though but very wasteful um brazers heaped with glowing hot coals heat this chamber as well which contains a large stone bed covered with soot-stained furs, its head against the north wall. In a shallow niche above the bed is a bas-relief of a giant, scowling Duragar, clenching its teeth. At the foot of the bed is a flat-topped iron trunk sealed with a bulky padlock. A stone door is set into the western wall. Uh, padlock sounds like something that Tranquil would be interested in. <laughs> I check for traps. <laughs> I'm gonna stand and go ahead and give me a uh, a roll to check for traps. Sixteen. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is trapped. Okay. Uh, what kind? Yeah, there of seems tra- to be um, uh-huh. inside the lock itself. Um, as you're kind of feeling around to check for the trap, you hear this little like tink, 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 as if your tool is hitting um, glass inside the lock itself. Mm. All right, can I disarm the, the, the trap using my thieves tools, please? Uh, go ahead and give me a roll. Uh, that is 16 plus proficiency plus dex, so 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, um, as you continue to, to work that lock, feeling it loosen a little bit, um, outside of that large keyhole of the padlock plops a small glass vial full of some sort of um, black glimmering liquid. Sister, I got you a present. <laughs> Do you toss it at me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I give it to Shivers and he brings it over to you as gently as possible. You want me to drink this? No, no. You throw it at someone or make somebody else drink it. Mm, thanks. Uh, and then do you want me to roll to unlock the lock itself now? Sure. Yeah. Uh, that's even higher. So 18, 19, 20, 23. Okay. Um, it does uh, open up, yeah. Uh, what's inside? Um, there are, uh, it contains a pair of dwarven sandals carved out of obsidian. 
uh, a quilted smoking jacket the size of a dwarf and sewn with 50, uh, 50 gemstones, <gasps> and a malachite beard comb set with seven red garnets, and a hookah made of platinum and star sapphire. Lastly, a rolled up leather scroll with a sequence of numbers on it. Sorry, is someone keeping track of this stuff? Are you guys taking it all out? Uh, well, the scroll goes to Finnick along with the hookah because he's the only yes. one who looks like he smokes. I was going to call it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the comb and the sandals and the the robe. The only person who can wear those is Z. So I guess we'll throw those in the bag of holding. Who is keeping track of our inventory? I can start. You guys well, start or everything. we can split yes, it up. Please. Well, this is like the inventory of this dungeon. Like, I think we've all been tracking our own stuff and mm -hmm. Rio has the travel stuff. I am going to put the Malachite comb on my character sheet, though, because that is my new prized possession. <laughs> everything out of the trunk. Are there yeah. any onyxes on that there? jacket? <laughs> Sorry. Um, what do you have written down? Absolutely nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, I will text it to you. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Okay, so as you take the last item out of the trunk, it's strange you feel the floor of the trunk raise with the item, and anybody that's in the room needs to make a con safe. Damn. Oh, double traps a chest! <laughs> I mean, that hookah is worth a ridiculous amount. You said con? Yeah. Yeah, everybody make a con save if That's you're if you're standing in the room. Too. 18, um, no. Okay. For the record, I probably would have... Uh, I mean, you would still have guidance on you, Finnick, or uh, Altus. Yeah, so you haven't okay. that yet. Yeah, that's an extra so, D8? D4. D4. Four. Does a so, 14 pass? <laughs> uh, the DC is 14. Um, so... 22 poison damage if you're in the room uh, and yeah. did not pass half as much if you did pass. So seven, okay. As seven poison? A, yeah. Um, as uh, gas starts emitting from the trunk and fills the room with this pinkish purple haze. Can I disarm it or is it like a continuous stream or is it just gas it's and then It's just stops? gas and then it fills the room. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. How much damage was that? That was 22 if you failed, 11 if you succeeded. 22, God. Like, do we feel like we need to flee the room or is it dissipating? The gas is not dissipating. Okay. All right. I open this door. <laughs> you open the, that side door? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can get the feeling that if you stay in the room uh, for another turn, um, the gas is still affecting you. Um, as you throw open the door, uh, it is a closet. Um, and inside of it, as uh, you, how long do you stay to see what's in there? I don't, I run okay. out. Um, you catch a glimpse of a uh, statuette um, carved out of a dark material uh, and no clothes. Hmm. Uh, how big is that statuette, sister mine? I, I tell him what I remember. I just got a glimpse of it. Uh, it's maybe like two-ish feet tall. Do you think Shivers could carry that? I don't think so. He doesn't have skin. <laughs> well, he doesn't have to breathe either. That's why I was... <laughs> could Chester carry it? Um... I mean, I'd be kind of heavy for a raven, but Dan, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I forget that he's a raven. He, no, there's no way. Yeah. I mean, it's six seconds. Could someone just run and grab it and leave? Hold their breath. With breath held. Z, in your form, aren't you nope. resistant to no? No. Nope. Mm. <laughs> you guys and your treasure. Okay, I run back in and go grab it. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have six seconds. Uh, you can now see in the room that it's a two foot tall statuette uh, made of Chardolin. Dean, you grab it? Ugh, yes. Uh, go ahead and make a wisdom save. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I knew it. 
whiz, yeah. wherever the whiz there was. That's a 12. Um, take 18 psychic damage. Ouch. Oh, wow. I'm not looking so great now. You get this feeling running down your spine of your brain being devoured from the inside. <gasps> Ew. I do not bring it back out. I shove it back in there and I run back out. <laughs> okay. And all that happened so quickly that I will say that you don't have to take damage from that, especially not having brought the statue back with you. So just no extra damage from the, um, from the gas. Well, that's good. That probably made me pass out. <laughs> Are you looking where's, bad? Where's the statue? <laughs> it's bad news. Do not go in there for it. Is she um, was she able to see what it was of? It was Shardolin. Um, no, what like what it what form it had. Oh. It was a nude female Durgar with no facial features, a spiked crown atop a bald head. And you did manage to see as you were just kind of like sprinting there, um, even with the distraction before that pain took hold of you, uh, stacked on smaller shelves around the statue itself were seven Mind Flayer skulls. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to wrap a scarf around my face and run back in oh for God. a Mind Flayer skull. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the healing ready. They don't have... Yeah, I'm a guidance type of As he's going in, I'll quill. say, leave leave the Chardolin quill. Yeah. I just want a Mind Flayer skull. I mean, that sounds cool as hell. <laughs> Okay. With your, uh, what are you wrapping around your face? Uh, a scarf. Okay. Um, you all have cold weather gear, so I think that's fair. Um, as you go back into the room, yeah, it's, it's easy enough to do um, keeping your party clear of the doorway as you do so. Uh, a little bit of the gas seeps out every time that it's open. Um, but yeah, you're able to go uh, back and forth with that. You have a mind flare skull. Hold um, it up for Z. <laughs> It looks Thanks. very humanoid, except for the, there's no jaw. Um, this whole section is like an open, um, but the top of it looks almost humanoid. Maybe let's so keep cool. moving. Should I get yeah. this one bronzed or silvered as well? Do you think? <laughs> I think I bronzed would look you. great. Right? <laughs> I'm walking away. Do you need healing? Uh, I don't want you to waste it just yet, but I'm at 12 HP, so. Uh, I can I can heal a lot of us and myself. I mean, I also have a potion too, I don't. So I, don't I would rather know. waste healing on you than you save for a spell, because if you go down, we're all gonna die. Well, okay. what we could do is prayer of healing is 10 minutes, and so is comprehend languages if you want to go after that scroll, master. Yeah, but then we'd have to wait here. Well, but if we're waiting for healing anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 definitely uh, something we could do. Altus, do you know of um, any deity that has that resemblance of the statue? I mean, you're the, you're the gods person in the group, so if anyone Altus, needs to know. If you want to, go ahead and roll a religion check. Yeah, I would like to. Um I don't know of any Druragar gods, but yeah, I definitely don't know of any Druragar gods. I mean, that makes sense. It would almost be suspect if you did, honestly. Yeah. I rolled a six on my check and I, I genuinely can't think of anything I've heard of that resembles. This whole space has been far too distracting at this point to have a good handle on it and it just draw blank. So uh, I suppose what we could do is if we do take a quick 10 minutes, maybe stop the elevator from, uh, but that would be more suspicious than. I think it'd be more suspicious. Yes. Do we, what if we have someone keep watch of the elevator room while we kind of hide out in the central area wow. so as to not get. Uh, I, I can definitely do my rope trick, but I'm a little just wary using a spell slot, but I think that might be the 
the safest way. Why don't we hide out in here where the doors close and then we have shivers in here watching the elevator? I mean, technically the doors close in the room we're currently in too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So which room are you guys going into? I say we just stay in this room and then Shivers can watch the elevator. Okay. Yeah, we stay put and make sure the doors behind us are not leaking any gas. But he was immune to the poison damage, so no, I don't know how. talking about us. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, he didn't yeah. take any damage, so, from the poison. So, okay, so you're going to go ahead and do the rope trick in that room? I think we decided no rope trick, right? Just going yeah, to hang gonna... out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you have... Um, the scrolls from the other room and the scrolls from the chest that would both need to be deciphered, which. Um, comprehend language is. Just leave it up so you can read both. Yeah, I, I would do that. And I would do it as a ritual as well. Okay. Okay, so uh, go ahead and deal out your healing from prayer of healing for being in the room. Um, and then uh, go ahead and comprehend languages. Uh, you can see that set of papers uh, appear to be um, a, a guard schedule. Um, and then there is um, a, like a, a diary basically um, that are some of these pages have been torn out of. Uh, the diary talks about how um, whoever wrote this uh, is concerned for morale um, and things just don't seem to be right in the keep and they're going to keep trying to figure out what's going on, that they're, they're worried for Zard Rock. But they would never have any wavering faith in their commander. Zard Rock. Never, huh? Um, the other sheet you get um, the numbers off of, um, it is a, a sequence of two rows of numbers. Um, I'm sorry, not two rows of numbers. It's a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, sets of three numbers um, on a single scroll, each of them separated by a dash. Um, and those are written in Dwarvish. Okay. And uh, I sent Z the actual full list of numbers over text. But... Cool. Um, and the name, does that name sound familiar at all? Um, you know, no, actually, I don't think you guys have heard that name at all yet. You okay. killed all the other Durgar really without, um, talking to them. So the name, whose name, like, whose name did we get from the, the, the Durgar at Kevin's Cairn? Cause he said he was the son of someone. Go ahead and give me um, just like a straight wisdom check. With oh, that's an at 20. Great. Oh, yeah. no. oh, <laughs> yeah, that, is, that was who that person claimed to be the son of. That is the father of the Druagar we killed in the trap room back in Kevin's Cairn. Okay. He seemed, that, he seemed to think that we'd be very impressed by the name. Well, never heard of it other than now. Um, and this was found in the poison room, right? In the chest. In the chest of the, the poison room? Okay. The, are you talking about the, the diary sheet that mentioned the name? The, the diary sheets, yeah. No, that was from the office in the other room. The only thing with writing on it that was in that poisoned room is the little sheet of paper that had the numbers with, on it. With the numbers on it, okay. Yeah. Well, the Zardarash... Uh, is that the name? Zardarash? Zardarok. Rock. Zardarok. The Zardarok apparently is the commander of this area. And I guess, yeah, to your point, Z, we killed his son. But. Cool. Yeah, sorry, cool. Um, so I, I don't know if there's anything we can use here. I know the morale is low, but. I would, it would make sense by kind of a, a flippant way he sends his children out to die. Um, the well, the Drugar in this area definitely seem overconfident for sure. Yes. <laughs> well, they did create a Shardle and Dragon, so that could make some confidence. Um, can I glean from the, um, the troop 
map or the uh, sorry the rotation troop rotation like how many Druid are actually in this uh, so settlement uh go ahead and hmm. give me an intelligence because what you're going to try to do is be gleaming a number based off of their notes on scheduling just straight intelligence check yeah um that is a 17. okay um so from that you know um definitely that there are no more um patrols on this level um as far as what they have scheduled in there um there are patrols on the level above and the level below um it appears from this based on like the notes that they have there are fewer uh above and more below okay and then it just talks about the three different levels no additional guard patrols no mm -hmm. okay and this also is not like a war plan or something. So it's kind of unclear how many would have been sent out versus how many are okay. in the building. Um, but you do know that however they delegate the guards, there are fewer guards above, more guards below, and that there wouldn't appear to be any more guards on this level based on um, based on what they've written there. Okay. I'll share that with everybody. Um, everybody gets 19 health back. Oh, and I would try to do it to Shivers too, not knowing if I, if it works on him or if he took any damage. But I just would try to give it to Shivers too. Well, he would be out of range. Oh, uh, that's right. Would he be? Yeah, he's behind a closed door. <laughs> oh, yep. Never mind. Well, the intention was there. <laughs> I appreciate the intention. <laughs> Okay, we ready? Let's move on. Okay, so we're we going down then, based Maybe on that. Finish this floor. You want to finish? Yeah. This okay. Running up this hallway, doo -doo -doo. Okay. And That's my thought. But so, uh, as you come down the hallway, um, there is uh, just an opening to the south, and then you can see there's another, um, like three forked. Uh, opening at the end, as well as double doors along the hallway to your north. Right. This I, place is not massive. Double doors. Um, are you going to open them? Yeah. Okay. Um, just real quick, behind you, um, you can see that this is a dip off, and there's another portcullis that appears to lead to a drop off um, oh. where some of the haze is seeping in, but most of it is being sucked up. Interesting. I'll go ahead and I'm actually just going to reveal that real quick. Um, and from that, you can start to hear in this opening the clinking and clanking of something happening uh, below you. Um, so this okay, is open so, below? Yeah, there, it's okay. it's blocked by a portcullis, but it is open in both directions. Okay, cool. Um, so you're opening the double doors there? Excellent. All right. Uh, Three braziers heaped with glowing hot coals illuminate the, and heat this long hall. At the eastern end is a hexagonal stone table surrounded by six stone chairs. Seated in the chair facing the door is a haggard old Durgar with long black streaked with ribbons of white and fingernails like shards of iron. She is devouring a hearty buffet of cooked meats, mushrooms, and strange underdark fare. Lurking next to her is a small mechanical dragon made of a shiny black substance. Hunched over a hot stove in the west side of the room are three Durgar cooks. At the side of you, they drop their utensils and reach for their weapons, but the old Durgar says something in Dwarvish that keeps them at bay. Oh, she turns Comprehend. and says to all of you in common. Yeah, comprehend language is still up. So what did she say? Um, stand down. I'll kind of wave my hand to mostly Tempest. Honestly. Okay. Welcome, all of you. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to get down here from all of the commotion. Please have a seat. Uh, before we do that, uh, you need to give us at least five good reasons why <laughs> after you destroyed 10 towns killing thousands of people, why we should sit down. <laughs> um, I did 
no such thing, I will have you know. And she's still kind of sloppily eating as she's explaining herself. I am a guest here, much like yourselves, though I was invited. I was going to say, as soon as she says come in, I would have liked to cast the Zone of Truth. Um, if I can't now and it's so too late, that's fine. That? Yes. Okay. Which yes. is a wisdom save, correct? It is a charisma saving throw. Oh, thank you. And if they succeed on... Oh, they, they're, they're aware of it either way, correct? I don't believe so. An affected uh, creature... Oh, an affected creature is aware of this spell. If they're not affected, they're not aware? Correct. If they succeed, okay. they don't know. All of her guards get this look as they all kind of perk up and look at each other and she grins and one of them leans over and whispers to her and she cackles. Well, it was a nice try. I don't have a reason to lie to you though, at least not yet. We'll see how useful all of you can be. Didn't even ask what the DC was. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, from their roles, she got a nat 20. I have an 8, a 12, okay. and a 1. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all failed. Oh, sorry, with the disadvantage, I have an 8, a 1, and a 1. <laughs> okay, well, it was Maybe a good try. try. Well, I mean, all of them are compelled by it. Uh, all, of the, all of her guards are. She was the one that succeeded. Uh, I turn to one of the Druragar and I uh, I shout, who is she and why is she here? Um, it turns and speaks in Dwarvish to you. Uh, so the uh, only one that can understand, I believe, at this point is, uh, is Finnick. And the Durgar responds, she is Grandolfa Musgart, leader of the Musgart tribe, <laughs> and we are her humble servants. And she cackles again, taking great enjoyment in this little show. <laughs> I mean, I would have told you that. <laughs> I'll lean Excuse. over and say, well, it's obviously Gwyndolfa Musgart. <laughs> tell me why I shouldn't kill you. Well, then I'd be of no use to you. So who invited you here and what favor will you ask of us? Are you sure you wouldn't like to sit? I mean, if you don't want to, that's fine, but there's a lot of food that's going to go to waste. Um, while this is all going on, <laughs> um, I'm doing detect thoughts to see if there's anyone invisible in the room. Nope. Uh, I sit and I reach for some food. I smack that out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> she she laughs at that as well. <laughs> She's having an absolute ball with this entire situation. Um, I was invited here by the uh, Lord of the Manor, I believe your folk would call him, uh, Zardarok. This crazy old fool, but one that I was hoping might be of some use. Fortunately, I think the old coots lost his mind. But if he's gone, more territory for me. And there's yeah, so. kind of the, the fat of the leg of some sort of animal that she's biting into, dribbling down her chin and onto her front as she gestures with the bones and continues. <laughs> so you have nothing to do with this dragon? Oh, no. I told him I wanted no part in the whole thing. I mean, if he wins, he wins, but... I don't have any reason to want to be on the surface. It's horrible out there. So, I'm perfectly happy with my empire below. I don't really need to be getting involved in his trifles. So what is it that you're offering us that we can't figure out on our own? I, I don't understand where you're negotiating from. You stand to gain power from us. What? motivation do we have to not remove four more Druagar from the surface? 
I have allies, others that have realized exactly what is, well, not exactly, but enough of what's gone wrong with Zardarok to be against his further command. I don't know exactly where he is right now, but he hasn't come back up from going below. So if you ask me, he is on the bottom level. Uh, he, if you remove me, my allies will not be able to assist you in whatever battle is to come. So you're telling me that your allies, they're Drurigar? Yes, I have a number within his forces that I have turned and a few of my own forces that he believes to be uh, vassals of his. And you're telling me that this being we just met, that we're going to go attack a Drurigar commander and some of his own forces will then turn and attack him as well, on, just on your word. Yes. Um, I understand I'm not compelled, but... And she looks up at one of the other ones and he comes over uh, and speaking in Dwarvish, um, he agrees. And um, we, uh, we we have a number within the forces that are loyal to us. And what would you take in form of payment for this charity? Territory. Oh, I just want him dead. Mm. <laughs> He invited me up here with the hopes of making me his next wife. But after what happened to the other three, I have no part that I want in this. He wants an alliance between the Mosgart clan and his own, and I was entertaining his offer, but I haven't signed anything. I haven't made an agreement. He gave me this little thing, and she kind of gestures at the little um, shardled and pseudo dragon that's sitting on the floor next to her, which is a nice gift, but not enough for me to put the fate of my clan in his hands. Uh, you do Tempest, realize... Would you like to... Uh, you do realize I'm that dragon will eventually drive you mad, correct? Oh, I'm not going to touch the damn thing. <laughs> we have a solution, and I just look at Tempest. Hang on. You like this gift? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Animated, right? It's just a statue. It is, is animated. It, it, okay, okay. I don't want to kill it. <laughs> I don't want to kill it either because some of us can touch it without any fear. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't kill it because she seems to be offering allyship, and I wouldn't want to jeopardize that just yet. But I misunderstood. I took it as like the same little statue as from oh. the other room, the one that did the psychic damage, or whatever. so. Let's say we worked with you and we killed Zardarok and you took over this fortress. I don't want the fortress. To stop you. So you're going to leave then? Uh, you did say she hates the surface. I would seal this place off and have no more to do with it. But the rest of his lands, I believe, I could take without uh, much interference with him gone. So uh, I don't what, know what's... I don't well, know. Let's say that we're not going to have to deal with you again later on. Well, then is then, and now is now. So make your choices <laughs> as you may. I have more I can tell you of this horrible place. I mean, there's no, there may not be any use in uh, fortifying and shutting this place down. I mean, we did just come into contact with hundreds of now homeless 10 towners. If they want it, they can have it. But I'll tell you that the lower levels, I don't believe, are safe for the inhabitants of you surface folk. Thin skin, all of you have. Thin skin. What does that mean? Well, there is a tunnel into the Underdark below, and whatever monsters he's brought up, still there that you'd have to remove. Um, and beyond that, I plan on leaving, but that's not to say that something else isn't going to decide to tuttle through eventually. If you have a weak space, things like to expand. All right. So the deal is we kill your soon to be ex-husband. Oh, we're not married. No, 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 no. Ex-fiance. Hey, <laughs> so, uh, 
And in exchange, you seal off this area and give us that pseudo dragon there. <laughs> she kind of looks at it. I don't really have a use for it. So if you want it, you can have it. I, I see no purpose of that. It's been very useless so far. It does nothing but sit there and occasionally flap. Damn thing follows me around. But oh. if that's what you want, that's fine. Just take care of my problem. Oh, well, we were going to do that regardless. So it seems that we've come to an agreement. You get your allies to get out of our way and we'll take care of him. No, you get your allies to help us take care of him. Yes, I want as many daggers uh, uh, positioned near my liver as possible, Altus. That makes sense, yes. <laughs> I will well, you are you. planning to keep the pseudo dragon, so I don't know if you're in the right state of mind there, Quill. It's a little baby. We can't kill the baby. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tough voice. <clears throat> Is there anything else you'd like to know or? We'd like to know the extents of the caverns below, what's on the second floor, and if any beasts that you know of have made their way to the surface. Anything that's gonna stand in our way from killing your enemy. I do know that he's taken a few things to the surface already. I'm not exactly sure what, but they are beasts of the Underdark. He set an entire force in motion to try and take care of whatever the dragon could not. But as you may have guessed, many of us, not just those in my clan, do not like the idea of going to the surface. But when he has... did he send them out? Oh, at this point, uh, four days ago? Uh, about a day before the dragon itself. There's lots of troops coming and going. As I said, there is a connection to the Underdark that you could probably use to get to the towns. Uh, I've avoided any entrance to the surface. I do know that he has kidnapped a Myconid sovereign that he's keeping below as well. Angry chap at this point. Ah. Why? Well, they've been harvesting his uh, spores. It was, it was rhetorical. I know that they have uh, mounted large lizards, although I don't know how many will be on them inside the building. And I do know that he's been dragging up whatever horrors he's able to find. There are two elevators on this floor. Both go up and down and both will take you to different locations. I pick up the food that I knocked out of Altus's hand earlier and kind of dust it off and give it back to him. I guess she's okay. Thank you, Tempest. And I kind of eat. Uh, it is slimy, um, and it is <laughs> very difficult to tell exactly what kind of meat it is. But as you go to take a bite into it, it like stretches and then a piece snaps off. Uh, almost the texture of like a, mm. a steak of calamari. I Gross. take it out and I just kind of set it down and I try to <laughs> pretend like it didn't just happen. And she cackles yet again. And these forces uh, that he sent to 10 towns, were they um, only your people or were there any other denizens of the Underdark he sent as well? I believe there was something larger. He did it before, Oof, what was that thing? It's large and lumbering. It took up a lot of space. I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what it was, but he took at least one larger creature with him. Was it you know shiny? With him. No. And do you know which ten town he was sending the majority of the force to? I have tried to stay as far out of the planning as possible, but he bragged about sending something to each of them, anything that was left standing. He seems very agitated lately, though. I think something's gone amiss that he doesn't want to tell me about. That I assume that's why you're us. here. Yeah. Well, shall we make our way upstairs and then all the way back down. I admittedly do not know what is above. I, I avoid going 
further above ground than I already am. Touching the stone makes it a little more comfortable, but still, being this far out of the earth is unnerving. Do you know anything of the rest of this area? I believe this is where um, he kept himself and his sons. Based on where you came from, you saw the barracks. I take it there's nothing left there. You're welcome, by the way, for um, being let in. Not myself, but one of mine. I don't think he has any sons left, does he? I haven't seen them in, in oh, at least a week. Hmm. Again, Do you know where they, they were posted? I believe there was one in oh, that settlement. It's... Um, East Haven, you all have such boring names for things. And uh, Cairn, Cair, Car, Cair, both Cairn dead. <laughs> well, you've done a little bit more for me then. That takes care of the line of succession. That's all he has left at this point. He had nine children and, you know, the Underdark is a dangerous place. All right. Well, come here, little guy. <laughs> the dragon just like very like mechanically like step, 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 <laughs> step. <laughs> I am going to wrap something around his stinger uh, and then put him on my shoulder. Um, so it is uh, it's going to be like 40 to 50 pounds. Oh, it's it's like solid stone. I think I can handle that. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> as long as you're not carrying anything else. <laughs> <laughs> How many of your compatriots can we expect to be helping? At least one for every five, depending on where you are. Okay. And do you have any compatriots currently at the Ten Towns or in no. route to the Ten Towns? Absolutely not. I am here to get what I want and to go home. My ale does well enough on its own. I don't need to conquer some sort of terrible surface wasteland. Well, I'd say it was a pleasure, but it wasn't. And I hope that we don't see each other again very, very, very soon. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> As I get up, I, ah, it smells like a good coup. I love a good coup. <laughs> um, I'll duck out of the room. Okay. So are we going down or are we finishing this level? Well, you just heard that they sent, I mean, there's an additional force going to, to 10 towns, something big from under the Underdark. Well, Master, that could have been the force that we already dealt with. Well, I only saw a Duragar. I didn't see anything big from the Underdark. Well, it could be possible that one of the other towns got it worse than we thought they did. Regardless, going and chasing after it, like last time, it took us how many hours? <laughs> I just don't want to go back to less than what we left. I don't think we can leave and come back. I think we need to deal with this now. I'll... If we cut the head off of the snake, then Grandalfa will take over. So, I mean, at least we won't have to worry about our backs anymore. <laughs> I'll send a letter with everything that we... Or I'll just send a letter letting uh, Bryn Shander know that uh, there might be another force coming and expect something big, something nasty from the Underdark. And I will send it with Jasker okay. and tell him to fly as quick as he can to Bryn Shander. I will peek back in. Grand Alpha. Hmm. If I'm to understand, you would be inheriting the lands of the soon to be late king, correct? Uh, yes, I will take all of the Sunblight's land. And you would take on all of his responsibilities and tithes, correct? 
I don't like the insinuation of that. I'm planning on demolishing it. I'm not his successor. I am his conqueror. That I don't think bears me in any sort of responsibility. Well, you wish to have good faith with the Ten Towns, correct? I wish to have no faith with the Ten Towns. Well, would it not be prudent to maybe send supplies or goodwill towards the enemy of your enemy? Kill him or he'll kill you. That's all I can give you. I want no contact with the service beyond what I've already been forced to have. Very well. And I will dagger eye her as I leave again. <laughs> this this uh, little thingy can fly, right? Um, it, it can, yeah. Excellent. It is, We're going it's not very down, down, down. Is. is there a special stat block for it, or uh, it has a pseudo dragon's stat block? Uh, aside from that, it is made of charlatan, um, and only uh, understands draconic and dwarvish. So, wait, are we going down, or are we finishing the rest of this? I don't, oh, I, can't, I don't know. Sorry. What no, 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 I that's on that's so cute. So I don't know I'm just happening. ready. <laughs> it sounded like doing? this layer is, like this level is all cleared because we got through the barracks and everything. Yeah, say, I mean, what you can see from here is that it breaks into three from that point. I will, I think you guys can see far enough to see that there's, um, There is a door at the, a double door at the end of the hall, um, but. Well, she did say that the princes lived here and princes keep expensive things, but I can understand not having that as a priority. We can always come back, but yeah, I mean, we could clear it if it's only a few, I mean, we never, we don't know how far, much more. We have a bag of holding, correct? Yes. I will put the pseudo dragon in there. Keep track of how much stuff you're putting in there. Because <laughs> I'm not keeping track of the exact size, but remember, 64 by 64 can hold 500 pounds, right? Yep. And we have mostly just rations in there right now, right? Yeah. And the other treasure there. that you took out of the other room. We didn't take, well, no, we didn't take any treasure out of the first room. And the other stuff we divvied up between people. Oh, okay. So it's not in the back. And we uh, left a good portion of the rations with the dog sled so that we wouldn't so we would have room in it so okay so you can, I'll, I'll allow you to fit the the dragon in there if you're not comfortable i can hold the bag huh or if you're not comfortable carrying the bag I'll with the dragon it. in it oh, okay <laughs> okay we're next i need to learn draconic master do you speak draconic <laughs> no Priorities. <laughs> Quill has them. It's have a new dragon best friend. <laughs> I, as he puts the, as, as I put the bag away, I whisper into the bag, you better behave in there. <laughs> in Draconic. Okay. Where to, guys? Uh, we go up, we go down, or we search for the prince's rooms. Oh, I'm just excited for a good coup. <laughs> Let's go down. Let's just go and take care of them, and then we can have all the time in the world to search everything else, right? I mean, that makes sense. Sure, sure. Unless okay, there's sure. magical well, item that can help us, but no! Let's go! <laughs> yep, so we'll go down, yeah. Okay, um, let me go as we. As we wait for the elevator, I give everybody a potion of healing. Thanks. Potion of healing? Okay. Yes. Not wanting to let me pick you guys up. Okay, one second. So as you're going through, it is going uh, to the space above you. And shortly thereafter, Having lots of fun little fights with uh, Roll20 tonight. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, uh, it comes back the other direction. 
and you all find yourself in a similar warmer level. Warmer. And for all of you, that is uh, towards the bottom of the screen there. Yeah. You'll see an area that was revealed. So the elevator shaft terminates in this room. A large stone wheel next to the iron cage turns constantly, seeming to be the space that controls it. Anyone want to investigate before I open the door? <laughs> door. <laughs> okay. Within the room beyond, uh, it's clear that this is some sort of antechamber, uh, and there are two Doragar standing against the wall who appear to be guards, and they do not react to your entry. So I walk by and I go to this other door. <laughs> they do not move. Uh, or appear to acknowledge you in any way. The room also contains abrasures of the glowing hot coals in the northwest corner and southwest corner, and you can hear the mechanical noise from behind you still. I give one of them, like, what's up, not as I walk past. Doesn't react. Does it, but it, they, they don't react, but do we get the sense that they can't see us? Oh, uh, there's I nothing there that would stop them from seeing you. I think they're muskarts. <laughs> One of them okay, I kind just of wanna... coughs uh, as he gets the sup, but otherwise <laughs> okay. they make no motion to acknowledge you. All right, let's open this next door. That's what's up. Okay. This oh is a throne room. The ceiling of this hall arches to a height of 30 feet. Stone steps lead up to a semicircular dais Against the south wall, atop the dais, is a misshapen throne, crudely carved out of black crystal. Small, crackling flames burn in the braziers that occupy the room's corners. Slumped near the east wall is a tall, bipedal fungus creature. Luminous spores float in the air around it. A savage, white-furred biped has torn off one of the creature's arms and is holding it, while four other white-furred bipeds covered with fungal growths, try to capture the floating spores in jugs. Well, fuck. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I will let you get that first round off in the mobile for initiative. Oh, okay, cool. Um, My uh, let's see. Five. Tell me what you're in. Well, I don't actually. Oh yeah, I do have my rifle. I uh, one of the white furred things gets a face full of rifle. <laughs> so all of the little green things are those white furred things. All right. Do white furred things get hit by a sixteen? <laughs> uh, that is an excellent question. They do. Excellent. And then the laser crossbow does 3d8 plus two. God, 3d8 plus two. Could I have hexed him as well? <laughs> <laughs> it's This is just a real quick surprise round. <laughs> it's a bonus action. <laughs> uh, 14 plus two, 16. <laughs> all right. So as that shot goes off, they all turn to look at you with their glowing eyes. Few of them only one of them appears to have any sort of life in it. Uh, and they all begin to advance on you. And that is where we will end tonight. Welcome to the throne room, Zarda Rock. Yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we had a really good time. Sorry, we were like three minutes from where we should be ending. So I didn't want to start a whole nother battle at that point. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys coming over and watching us on Twitch uh, and for watching this on YouTube next week. Um, and with that, we'd also like to thank our patrons, Sparky, uh, David Lugo, David, Daniel, Scott, Rio's mom, Alistair, and our newest, uh, Sean. Thank you so much for all um, joining the Patreon and for supporting us. Uh, we really appreciate that. Awesome. 
Yeah, over there right now we have our after parties, which is what we'll be doing momentarily, um, where we kind of talk about this, go over any of the questions and whatnot that people had. But if you do have questions of your own, feel free to reach out in the chat, in comments, uh, on any of our social media, which are listed below, as well as our email, which is mightymmcast at gmail.com. And I believe that's all the announcements that I have. If you're on Twitch, uh, in about half an hour, we will be starting at two hours of our World of Darkness campaign, which is uh, story mastered or storytellered by Rio. Uh, so so that's a fun game. I totally recommend hanging out for that or, or checking it out on YouTube. We have all of those up. Also, last thing, because I've been talking for too long, um, we have almost all of our uh, things up on podcast now, like I said at the beginning. So um, feel free to check those out if that's a format that you like as well. Uh, and with that, we will uh, end with our tagline, which I think is maybe the last time for this tagline since we just got a new uh, Patreon member at the tier to make the choice. Uh, and that is... Roll for initiative and say your tearful goodbyes. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>